Hello and welcome to this video on the distribution of organisms. All distribution of organisms means is quite simply where they are. Where do you find them? And this could be looked at on an international scale, like globally, where are different species of animals or plants flat found. It could be looked at on a national scale across Britain. Um, you could have a map of Britain, you could be looking at where particular species were found, where they were distributed, or simply you could look at it on a really local level, like um, within the same wood or within the same shoreline, where are different organisms found. There's several different factors that affect where an organism might be found, um, including things like temperature, Um, the availability of nutrients and how many nutrients there are in certain place, perhaps light or water or perhaps oxygen or carbon dioxide or both depending on what the organism is and there may be several other things as well um, for example if we're talking about animals then predators might play a part to to where the organism is distributed so all these things here are factors that affect the distribution of an organism and you might be asked to list a couple of those in an answer for example affect the distribution we're going to focus on ways in which you can sample an area to have a look at where you find particular species so using sampling techniques to study the distribution of organisms okay so the first technique that we're going to discuss is random sampling with quadrats all a quadrat is is a um, normally a meter by meter but it can be different sizes metal um, mesh like this, made up itself of then smaller squares. So a mesh of metal, that's what a quadrat is. And you would use this quadrat to sample an area and investigate the distribution of a species. For example, if we were looking at the distribution of daisies, for example, Um, we might want to compare the distribution of daisies in shade or non-shade. In within a particular parkland, or you might want to compare the distribution in two different grass types or slightly different habitats or whatever you wanted to do. Often with distribution, you're talking about comparing two different areas and having a look at the difference. So if we took one example, one area, um, perhaps this is our um, shaded area. The first thing that we would do would be to measure out our sampling area. For example, it could be um, that we measure an area that is 10 meters for example by 10 meters now we can't just go along this whole area here and count the number of daisies it would take a really long time to scour this whole area here walking up and down up and down to count all of the daisies that you could possibly find and you're still open to make mistakes and things like that so instead what we can do is randomly sample, it's important that it's random, randomly sample this area using quadrats. So by putting the metal grids down in random areas and counting the number of daisies under that grid. After that, we can then calculate the average or the mean number of daisies um, per small area within this sampling area. Now, Contrary to popular belief, we don't just go around throwing quadrats with our eyes closed around here. So first of all, it's very dangerous to do that. Um, and it's 
just not good practice because we might by accident sample the same area again and again. So to avoid that the proper way to do it is to then section off your um, sampling area into a grid. So for example if you section this off with some, some um, thin line or something going down I'll just do one half of it otherwise it'll take ages. You could use some wine so just peg it in at the bottom and use some twine to section off different areas and then you would do the same in the other direction so you would then have some line going across here so if I just do this half again you would then essentially end up with one big grid and if we chose to do for example each little section one meter by one meter that would make a hundred different squares in this grid that we could sample so there would be 10 in each row 100 squares in total that we could sample so we need to now decide where to put our quadrat so if we just put this as step two is to divide the sampling area into a grid I'll just put e.g. 100 squares we now need to decide which squares we're going to put the quadrat in now obviously we are not um, going to sample all of those squares like we said before we need to decide how many we're going to sample so I'm going to suggest for this one that we sample 10 squares and then we need to decide where to put them now to do that we need to assign each of our little squares a number so from 1 to 100 so all along here all our little squares would be 1 to 100 we would then use a random number generator to find the squares that we're going to use so if our random number generator you can get those on your phone and things like that We'll pick a number for you between 1 and 100 and you will then go and sample that square. So use a random number generator to decide which 10 squares you are going to sample. Okay, so let's say for example the random number generator pulled us randomly ten squares that we had to sample and we would then simply place the quadrat down on that square and count the number of daisies in it place the quadrat there and count the number of daisies and so on so our next step is to place the quadrat in the randomly chosen squares and then count the number of daisies in those squares it's important that it's random because otherwise you might just go along and put a quadrat where you see a daisy um, even if you're not meaning to um, do that on purpose subconsciously you might be choosing areas where they, you happen to see lots of daisies so it's really important to make this um, a valid experiment we do it randomly then the final thing to do then once you've counted up the number of um, daisies in each square you need to calculate an average and you might be asked to do this in your exam so you need to calculate the average number of daisies and in this case it would be per um, meter squared which you would then in the next steps go on to compare that with 
something that was not in the shade. So a lot of detail here, but if they ask you a method question, you need to really um, thoroughly write about how you'd set up a quadrat. So have a look through those and um, read those very carefully. And the other thing that you need to know along with distribution of organisms is you might be able to ask to calculate the mean, the median, and the mode. So just a quick recap if you're not familiar with those. Let's put a random set of numbers here. So to calculate the mean, we would add the numbers up, press equals, and then divide them by how many there are. So we'd add all of these numbers up together and then divide them by 7, because there are 7 numbers, and that would give us our mean. And you'd need to round it up to the nearest whole number, because that's what you've measured in. To get our median, we need to write the numbers in size order from smallest to largest. So we've got 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 7. And then the median is your middle number along there. So our median here is 2. And for mode, that's the number that appears the most. So in this case, number 1 appears 3 times. So our mode would be 1. So they might ask you um, to calculate mean, median or mode with any of the sampling techniques. One other thing you might need to do with this kind of sampling is calculate or estimate a population size. For example, if you'd um, calculated an average number of daisies per metre squared in this shady grassland, question might suggest something like what is the total number of daisies you would expect in 2000 square meters for example of shaded grassland and in that case you just take your average that you'd um, have calculated down here your average number of daisies per meter squared and then multiply that by the area that they've given you. So times that by the 2000, then that will give you the total number, an estimate, sorry, for the total number of daisies in a particular population size.